Like I said, we are going to start with our Bible study or the message for today. And uh, we are going to focus on uh, the Passover, a message I've entitled Easter or Passover. Okay, Easter. You can turn our Bibles to the book of um, Luke chapter 22, if you have your Bibles. The Gospel of Luke chapter 22 and uh, whatever message I preach Sunday morning I upload Amen. Uh, like I said on YouTube and you'll find the account number there as well probably you can do a deposit uh, into the account of the church Amen. Uh, because there are still things to do Amen. as we all know so Luke 22 if you are there you say Amen, amen. Amen. So we are going to read a couple of verses there. And uh, the message for the morning, the title is Easter or Passover. Luke 22 verse 19. And he took bread and gave thanks and break it and gave unto them saying, This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Verse 20. Likewise also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. But behold, the hand of him that betrayeth me is with me on the table. Amen. Uh, Easter or Passover. Now, Whenever we uh, hear these two concepts, Easter or Passover, most people, even Christians, probably do not know what these two words mean. Okay? So we are going to look at both of them a little bit in detail. So we're going to start with Easter. What is Easter? Okay? What is Easter? Because on the calendar... When the public holiday is stated, it's not written Passover, it's written Easter, right? The Good Friday, is Easter Sunday, and then Easter Monday, right? So the question is, what does the word Easter mean? <laughs> okay, because many people do not know what Easter is. So the word Easter comes from a Greek word or a Latin word, which is um, Pasch, spelled P A. S C H. Now this word is only used in the New Testament, okay? Uh, but then this word Easter, it basically means Passover, right? So it's only that it's in Greek because the New Testament was written in Greek and Aramaic. So you have to understand, uh, and then the translation is a little bit different. So just why, uh, just how you would see names being translated, if you see. The same word in the Old Testament and the same word appears in the New Testament, it's totally different, okay? Especially in the King James. Like, for example, the name Elijah. If you read the word the name Elijah in the Old Testament, it's Elijah, right? But in the New Testament, when they speak about Elijah, it's written Elias, okay? And uh, the same is with Jeremiah, Jeremias, okay? Is Isaiah, is Esiah, so, uh, uh, and even the word Zarephath in the Old Testament, but in the New Testament is Zarepta. So, it's just the different way of saying it, okay? So, but the New Testament one, or what the New Testament Easter presents is um, the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Because Jesus died, amen, um, uh, and then on the uh, third day, he rose again, which we know is today, which is the resurrection Sunday. That is why we celebrate, um, amen, today with uh, eating, breaking the bread of drinking of wine, because um, it represents Jesus Christ um, dying and resurrecting. That is when we as children of God, it's a symbol that, uh, amen, we had died to our sin, and uh, our sin, amen, was conquered in the grave. And then Jesus Christ raises up, which means we are a new person. 
Remember in the book of uh, 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17, that says, Now, amen, um, uh, uh, whosoever is in Christ becomes a new person. The old man has died. In other words, you have died with the nature of Jesus Christ, amen, who died there. You have died and now you are a new person who has raised up again. So you become a brand new man in the sight of God. So the sin has died, amen, and death has been defeated. That's why as a child of God, you ought not to be afraid of death, amen, because Jesus Christ conquered death. Because death is something that um, every culture, amen, every person, that uh, there are so much superstitions about death um, and the fear of the unknown. Nobody wants to die. But Jesus Christ, amen, went to the grave. He conquered the grave and he rose again. That's why as a child of God, you and I should never be afraid to die. Okay, now I'm not saying you go out in the street and say, hey, shoot me, I'm not afraid to die, <laughs> provoking people, amen. But what I'm saying is the fear of death should not be there because how many know when you die, you go back to your father's house. Amen. Now, this is very significant, amen, because without Christ's resurrection, without today, the resurrection Sunday, amen, the whole gospel of Jesus Christ means nothing. Let's read 1 Corinthians Chapter 15, verse 14. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 14. Listen to what the Bible says. And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain, and your faith also is vain. In other words, Paul is saying is, look, if Jesus Christ did not really raise from the dead, then us preaching and doing all these sacrifices is useless. How many know? If Jesus Christ is dead, then what is the use of us? Amen. Sacrificing, amen. Living pure lives on us, going to church, praying, reading our Bibles, calling on the name of Jesus. Then everything is dead. Meaning the gospel hinges upon resurrection. Once resurrection is taken away, the gospel is dead. Because we know the other gods that people are saving have died, right? Buddha is dead. Muhammad is dead. And all the gods, some of them are sticks, amen, that people are worshipping. They are all dead. They don't have life. Um, but the power of the gospel is the resurrection. That Jesus Christ did not only die, but he rose from the dead. Okay, that is what makes the gospel powerful. Otherwise, we'd have a sad story. Yeah, then Jesus Christ was taken, he was beaten and killed. End of story. <laughs> right? That's, a, that's boring. Okay? That's a useless gospel. But the power of the gospel is um, he did not just die, but he rose from the dead. He conquered death. And that's why we sing today, alive, alive, alive forevermore. My Jesus is alive. Because we know our God is alive. Amen. We are not calling on a dead God. Amen. We are serving a living God. So that's what makes the gospel, amen, powerful. Now, what is Passover? We spoke about Easter, that is uh, more towards the New Testament, towards the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now, Passover is uh, the Jewish word. This is, uh, amen, uh, a Jewish festival. It means, uh, in the Hebrew, it's, it's uh, the word uh, Pesach. So, it's almost the same, which basically means the Passover festival. Okay, so this is um, the same word that is used, like I said, in the, in, in the Old Testament. So um, in the Old Testament, this refers to when the children of Israel had an exodus, amen, from um, the, ca the, the captivity of Egypt, going out from the land of slavery into the land of promise. So again, this is very powerfully important because, amen, this represents how the children of Israel, amen, um, were suffering, they were tortured, that they were in bondage. Here they are, the, the people of uh, Egypt, they were, you know, they're punishing them, uh, amen, they're making them to work very heavily, uh, and they're not getting paid because they were slaves. And they've been slaves for about 400 years. And after this, amen, um, God comes and brings forth deliverance. I mean, no, we have lived in sin, and sin has done things to us. We have been in bondage. We have been kept captive. Amen. Um, serving I mean, other gods. Um, and here their God basically was Pharaoh. 
Because whatever Pharaoh did, they had to obey. And they were oppressed. But then God delivered them from the hand of Pharaoh with the ten plagues, as we know. And God brought them out of this land of captivity, out of bondage, out of prison, into life. From slavery into freedom. And uh, amen. Now here are these people who are so much excited. I mean, if you, you put someone in prison and you, the day you are being freed from prison. The only those who have been in prison will understand. Amen. amen. If you are free, it's like, wow. My days. I never thought I was going to go out from there. Because um, you are enslaved. People who have been enslaved, amen, in things like um, cigarettes, uh, things like alcohol, amen, um, sexual immorality. Here they are, they are kept bondage by Satan, um, amen. But God comes to, to set them free, amen, because Jesus said, um, everybody who is kept captive and oppressed, um, I will give them freedom. And in that way, this is very powerful because you are the children of Israel. They are coming out of the land of Egypt. 400 years. There was no hope. Here you see hope has been restored. Amen. Peace has been restored. Victory. Identity. Amen. And people are excited. that They are rejoicing because finally they are free. So this is the Passover. The Passover, amen, um, mainly is used in the Old Testament. And until today, the Jewish people don't use the word Easter. They use the word Passover. So now... In simple terms, Easter and Passover mean the same thing. Okay? It's only the language difference. So if someone says, are you celebrating Easter? Are you celebrating Passover? <laughs> so it's basically the same thing. Okay? Because the lamb that was slain, amen, um, in the Old Testament. You remember the lamb was slain for the children of Israel? The lamb was killed, amen. Um, and then the, 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 the blood of this lamb was put on the doorpost. Of the Israelites' homes. That is the same lamb that was killed, which is Jesus Christ. And this time is not only for the children of Israel. This time, um, amen, Jesus Christ was sacrificed and his blood was shed, uh, amen, um, for each and every person in this world. Okay? So it's the same picture. The lamb was sacrificed. You read in the book of Exodus chapter 12, uh, you read that the lamb was sacrificed. And the same lamb that was sacrificed is Jesus. That's why we sing. Worthy is the lamb that was slain. Because Jesus Christ, amen, is the lamb of God. Amen. amen. Now, celebration. You see, God is a very good God. If you go read, I, I, I encourage you to go read Exodus 12, amen. God is very specific to the lamb. When you, what type of lamb you must kill. You know how you must cook it. Not just boil it, amen. You must roast it. And he says, when you eat, how much you eat, you must have your belt on and all, you know, all to detail. <laughs> God is very specific, right? So our God is a God of order. He's not a God of confusion. You can't just wake up and, man, I'm tired today. Of, I can't roast that, that lamb, but let's just put it in water. It boils. We start eating. No. He says, when you eat that lamb, make sure it doesn't reach morning time. If it's morning time, amen, uh, you know, destroy it, do something. But, so God is very specific. And God is specific to celebrations because how many of you know human beings like to manipulate celebration? You know, today already, when it comes to Easter or Passover, what do people do? We see eggs, <laughs> bunnies, Easter bunny. That's how people are, right? Because people tend to add their own things. That's why God is so specific. Do this, do that, do this, and only this and that and that and that. So he made sure everything was told. So we don't try to add in our own things. You know, human beings like to give an opinion. Maybe you do something, you draw and say, okay, how do you like it? Must I change it or must I add something here? People well, raise up their hands. Um, I, want, I think if you were supposed to color it a bit darker, it will be fine. Other one, oh, I think you must make it a bit bigger. So human beings always have an opinion and always want to add things. So God is so specific that people don't add things. Today, Easter has been time for what? Holiday. Oh, Easter is coming so I can go and visit my family. Oh, I miss them so much. <laughs> oh, Easter is coming so I can just be at the beach in Sokob Moon. Ah, enjoy the cool breeze. 
inhale and exhale. <laughs> right? No time for me to be a, a church. Of course, Paul won't say like that. They want to be a bit, you know, religious. Yeah, we'll pray with our family. Yeah, just to make it sound nice, you know. Sugarcoat it. <laughs> the question is, must we celebrate it? Yes, we have to celebrate Easter. Some people say, don't celebrate it. Yeah. We have to celebrate. Because God is the one asking us. Let's read Exodus 12, verse 15. Exodus 12, from verse 15. The Bible says, seven days shall ye eat unleavened bread. Even the first day you shall put away living out of your houses. For whosoever eats living bread from the first day until the seventh day, that soul shall be cut off from Israel. So you see there, amen, uh, God is giving direction on how uh, people should uh, celebrate the Easter. Again, uh, 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 in uh, Luke 22, verse 19, our main text for this morning. Listen to what Jesus says, Luke 22, from verse 19. Okay, there you say, Amen. And he took bread and gave thanks and break it and gave unto them, saying, This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Likewise also the cup after the supper, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood which is shed for you. Amen. So he gives directions on how we are to, amen, celebrate Easter. And he's saying, Do this um, in remembrance of me. Meaning you and I, should be able to also remember Christ during this time. Well, I know we always remember Jesus. Okay? But we should be able to remember that he died. That's why I like to show, amen, the uh, passion of the Christ during this season. And tomorrow we'll be watching it from 5.30. The passion of the Christ. Because the good thing is, many people are so much ignorant. You know, time goes by and I mean, you know, Things don't become important anymore. That used to be important. Mm. Just give it time. Used to be so much. Especially, you know when Paul watched the Passion of the Christ, they cry. <laughs> I can't believe he did that to Jesus. Oh, look how he's being beaten. From this day on, I will not sin anymore. This day on, I will do this. This day on, you know. <laughs> then days go by, months go by. You find yourself. <laughs> You are doing the things you say, I will never do. <laughs> because you forgot. Yeah. And then we put on the, the, the passion of the Christ. <laughs> it's tears again, right? <laughs> because we tend to forget. We tend to forget, amen, how painful it was. We tend to forget, amen, the stripes that Jesus Christ, amen, God for our sake. We tend to forget the cross, amen, how painful it was. We tend to forget these things. We think, oh, man, it's just, you know, milk and honey. Yeah, hey, let's just have our own fine fellowship. Uh, you know, but we tend to forget what it took Jesus Christ, amen, to go through for you and I. Yes. How painful it was. Not only that, we forget about the resurrection, the power of the resurrection. When we say, oh, my Jesus is alive. That we're not just saying something. Now, there's some people, amen, who try to argue. They say, you know what, look, uh, the Easter bunny and the Easter egg, uh, you know, the egg represents uh, an empty tomb. That's what I read. I say, what do you mean an egg represents empty tomb? Now, what does a bunny represent? Okay, these are just total lies. Because we all know what bunnies represent, right? In the uh, secular world. Bunnies always represent, amen, uh, 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 orgies uh, and uh, sexual immorality. How many of you know Playboy? You know Playboy, whether it's Roland, whatever you see there, the bunny there, right? Because bunnies always represent, um, amen, uh, sexual immorality. And no wonder when Easter time comes, people want to travel. You know, people start to drink on Friday. Oh, I'm going to drink. They start drinking from Friday, Monday. They don't even know where they woke up. <laughs> and then Tuesday, they will tell you, shoo, 
Hey, 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 Easter was so nice. <laughs> oh, I celebrated it nicely. Easter was so sweet. Right? Because that's what they, what they believe. They think Easter is just a time to enjoy themselves. Some people are looking forward to being off. Oh, I'll be <laughs> off from work. I will relax. I will sleep from morning until night. Oh, Monday, from Friday all the way up to Monday. Oh, this is a, it's a nice thing, man. <laughs> they don't know what, what's really going on. People don't understand, amen. That's why I believe it is our mandate as children of God, as Christians, to celebrate the Easter or the Passover the right way. Amen. You and I as children of God, you know, whenever you celebrate Passover or Easter, what you are doing, amen, is you are also teaching your children how to behave on Easter. No, 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 no. We are not going to church, my, my, my daughter, my son. We are going, uh, amen, to the beach. It's Easter. <laughs> so in the mind of this little child... When they grow up, amen, all their things, oh, I'm looking forward to Easter. Because I remember that time, um, how mommy and daddy took me uh, to a beach. Oh, I remember Easter. But they have no clue what Easter truly is about. Because their parents have not told them. Look at, uh, let's look at uh, uh, Exodus chapter 12, verse 26. Listen to what the Bible says here. Exodus chapter 12. Verse 26. It says, And it shall come to pass when your children shall say unto you, What mean ye by this service? In other words, what God is saying is here, one day, amen, the children of Israel, they are going to slaughter a lamb, they are going to roast, and you know, they are going to eat unleavened bread, and the children will come and say, Mommy or Daddy, what does it mean? What are you doing by this? Because how I many children don't know anything? And kids like to ask. So they'll ask, what are you doing? What does this mean? And that will be the opportunity for you as a parent, amen, to reach your child for Jesus. You say, child, my son, my daughter, we have been slaves in sin and we have been tortured by the enemy. But God, amen, the God of heaven has rescued us from slavery and has given us freedom. That is what you must tell your children. Now, if you are taking your children to the beach, they ask you, Mommy, what is Easter about? You are going to tell your kids, No, um, Easter is just for us to party. Or what? So you and I, you and I, amen, have to... Uh, have to be able to teach us. It's not only that, it's a witness to the world. Amen. Because how I many you know the world is watching you? The world is watching your action. How you behave is going to tell people a lot, amen, during this Easter period. Is it all about the Easter bunny or the Easter egg or gifts or holiday traveling? Or is this the time for Jesus and for time for church? So you know what? I can travel and put in holiday and leave days any other day. But not during Easter. This is time for Christ. This is time for me to focus on Jesus because I'm remembering what type of person I was. I'm remembering how bound I was in sin. I'm remembering how useless I was. I'm remembering where God took me from. And because of that, this week I'm going to dedicate it to Jesus. Amen. Because he died a painful death just for me. And on a Tuesday, after the Easter weekend, your colleague comes. Oh, man, oh, we drank, we partied. Oh, I don't even know how I slept, how I woke up. You know, like some people say, you know, from Friday, we don't even bath, we just drink. <laughs> oh, it was so nice. I was, I was enjoying. How did you spend your Easter? And some Christians will just scratch their head. Ah, yeah, it was nice. Ah, but yeah, it's okay, that's okay. <laughs> so you tell them, listen, my brother, my sister, 
Do you actually know what happened on this day? Do you know? And it will be an opportunity for you to witness to them. This was a time when Jesus Christ died for you and I. This was the time, amen, that a, a, a lamb was sacrificed, an innocent lamb was sacrificed in order to set the children of Israel free from the captivity of the Egyptians. And therefore, my brother, my sister, you and I should turn our faces to God. And you and I should, should understand, amen, the extent that Jesus Christ went to just to save your life and my life. The nails were real. It was not just these small nails that we used to build houses. It was real and it was going through his hand. I mean, you know, imagine your hand. A nail being pierced through your hand. One of the most sensitive parts of your body. Think about your feet. Nails being nailed into your feet. You are being nailed to a wood or a tree, rather. Because that time, some of us, we think, you know what? The cross was a perfectly curved, out wood, amen, like we do it today, right? We, the people make the cross so beautiful. Nicely curved, amen. It looks so beautiful. That's why we can have it on our, our neck, our necklace, on our ears. Because we think it was a nice thing. But you know, the cross was ugly. They didn't even have machinery to carry things out. So it was a wood or a tree that they would cut out and you'd be nailed to it. And it was a symbol to shame people. And here is Jesus, amen, he was, he was uh, crucified in an outside place like a dumping side. And he's kept there on the cross. And people would come there and mock him and laugh at him. While blood is dripping. And all that was just for you and I. Blood is dripping, amen, from him. And Jesus Christ is standing there. And you and I, amen, this should be an opportunity to witness to our family, to our friends. Heads about eyes are closed, amen. Every head bowed. Every eye closed. It was the blood of Jesus. One drop of blood. That day was enough for humanity. And on a hill, a victory hero, blood was shed for his precious blood. One drop of blood that day. By the blood of Jesus, amen, that was shed for you and I. God's only son, oh yes, as we bow to the presence of the Lord, I'd like to make an altar call, amen. Because Jesus Christ died a painful death for you and I. My question is, if you're not saved, I want you to, amen, raise your hand. I want to give your life to Jesus Christ. Because God loves you. I can face no because you Fear is gone. You are here, amen. You say, I need Jesus Christ to touch my life. Somehow, or probably you have been saved once in a while, but somehow along the way you've forgotten the extent that Jesus Christ went just to save your soul. I want you to do one thing, amen. I want you to repeat this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I'm thankful for your grace and your mercy upon my life. Father God, forgive me of my sin, for I have sinned against you. Lord Jesus, 
Come into my heart and make me a new person. In Jesus' name. Amen. Because you live, oh, fear is gone. Hallelujah. I want to take time to pray to God. Speak to Him. Amen. Lord, we thank You. Oh, we are grateful, Father God.